With World War II in full swing and the United States at war with the Axis, the United States sought to secure its position on the American continent. Through multiple ways, the US would successfully influence all of the American countries to either side with the Allies or stay neutral throughout the conflict. Brazil was one of these American countries, which joined the side of the Allies in August 1942, partially because German submarines sank multiple Brazilian ships close to the Brazilian coast, and also due to Getulio Vargas's pragmatic rule of Brazil. One of the realizations of the United States in their attempt to secure the American continent was that most of the equipment of the armies and infrastructure of the American countries were seriously outdated. Brazil was no exception, as it still operated five Renault FTs and 23 L335s in a mixed squadron. During World War II, Brazil would acquire aid in industry, logistics, army modernization, and equipment through Lend-Lease. The latter was also done to help deter any neutral American nation from siding with the Axis. Hello, and welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Wood, and today I'll be covering the T-17 Deerhound in Brazilian service. If you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to improve future Tank Encyclopedia content. Any help is greatly appreciated. Among the equipment Brazil received were 54 T-17 Deerhounds, making Brazil the only country to operate the T-17 in regular army units. In fact, the T-17 would be Brazil's first 6x6 wheeled armored fighting vehicle, and began the story of 6x6 wheeled vehicles in Brazil, which still continues to this day, with the EE-9 Cascavel and the Guarani APC. Sadly, the Deerhound has become a forgotten vehicle in the United States, and it would meet an equal fate in Brazil, being overshadowed by the successful, and beloved, M8 Greyhound. The development of the T-17 Deerhound was initiated after spring 1941, when the British Purchasing Commission submitted their requirements for both medium and heavy armored cars, which they wanted to receive as soon as possible. At the same time, the American Armored Force Board came forward with their specifications for a wheeled vehicle based on the British experience in Africa. The medium armored car was designated as T-17, and both Ford and Chevrolet came forward with a design. The Ford design is what is known as the T-17 Deerhound today, with a 6x6 suspension system. The Chevrolet design was a 4x4 driven vehicle, which was redesignated as T-17E1, and would later be known as the Stag Hound. Ford's design initially used two 90 horsepower Ford engines, but these were replaced by two Hercules JXD 110 horsepower petrol engines. Both engines used an individual transmission and linked up to a single transfer case. The T-17 had, as a result, eight forward and two reverse gears. The first pilot was delivered in March 1942, but was rejected due to numerous mechanical defects and extensive failures in the axles and transmission. The second prototype would attempt to solve these issues, but would cause the vehicle's dimensions and weight to become too excessive and it was rejected again. As a result, the contract of the T-17 was reduced to 250 vehicles. Originally meant for the British, which had named it the T-17 Deerhound, they rejected it as well. As a result, the 196 T-17s were delivered to the military police units in the US with their guns removed, while, unknown to many, 54 T-17s were delivered to Brazil through Lend-Lease. Brazilian sources are unclear as to when Brazil received the T-17s, as they estimate the delivery of the T-17 from 1943 to 1944. What is known is that the 18 T-17 Deerhounds were put into service in September 1944. It would receive the local classification of Cajo Blindado J. Reconocimento, or CBR, basically Armored Reconnaissance Vehicle. The Deerhounds would serve as both reconnaissance and command vehicles. The T-17 was delivered to three units. Two were Hegimento J. Reconocimento Moto Mechanizados, or basically motorized units. The other was a Battalion J. Policia do Exercito, a military police battalion. The mechanized regiments would later be renamed and reorganized on May 17, 1946 as Hegimento de Cavalaria Mechanizado. Markings would also start to be standardized around this time. From pre-1946, they used a star in the colors of Brazil. It was replaced from 1946 to 1983 with the Crucero de Sul, or Southern Cross. In addition, the registration of the vehicles was also standardized, with the EB-10 XXX format. EB referred to Exercito Brasileiro, the 10 to the type of the vehicle, in this case a reconnaissance vehicle, and the triple X to which vehicle, for example, 084. From November 1953, the units would be redesignated as Hegemento de Reconocimento Monomechanizado, or RREC-MEX, until about 1968 to 1969. 
after which they would be redesignated again as RC mechs, which they maintain to this day. Since sourcing mostly refers to the RREC mechs, and this was the longest period in which the T-17 served under this regiment designation, we're going to use the RREC mech designation from here on out. One of the regiments to receive 18 Deerhounds was the 2nd RMM, stationed at Rio Grande do Sul Estache at Porto Alegre. There, they would be operated along with M3A1 stewards, but also with M3A1 scout cars and Willys jeeps. Practically, nothing is known about the T-17s, which served in the 2nd RREC mech, except for a single one. EB-10084, nicknamed Tayuchi, was retired in 1970 and turned into a monument in Jaguaro. The 3rd RREC mech is, relatively speaking, a more documented regimen regarding the T-17. 18 T-17 Deerhounds were delivered to the then 3rd Motorized Regiment on September 4, 1944, stationed in Bajé. There, they equipped the 3rd and 4th Light Vehicle Squadron and served alongside 34 M3A1 stewards, which were delivered around the same time. With the switch to the RC mech, the Deerhound would serve under a new composition of two reconnaissance squadrons consisting of T-17s, M3A1 scout cars, and Willys jeeps a light tank squadron of M3A1 stewards, a command squadron, and a service squadron. The 18 T-17s will be registered from EB-10-126 to 136, and from 138 to 141. A single deerhound, thought to be used as a command deerhound, was designated EB-10-123. Interestingly, this deerhound is thought to have been one of the final T-17s in service, as it was retired in 1972. Like with the second RREC mech, practically nothing is known about the service of the T-17 within the BPE, which was located in Rio de Janeiro. The only thing that is known is that at least three T-17s were delivered to the military police. If the BPE received 18 Deerhounds, is unknown. What is known is that they used them in parades and that they were supposedly retired around the 1970s. The BPE might have been the last operator of the T-17 Deerhound. Although the T-17 was certainly an upgrade compared to the Renault FT or the Fiat Ansaldo L3, the Deerhound was not popular among crews. The two Hercules JXD engines had to be synchronized, which was supposedly quite challenging. Because of this, the Deerhounds were usually not really reliable. To make matters worse, driving the vehicle on a single engine in order to get around those synchronization issues would damage the drive shafts. All in all, it seems that the errors which the first T-17 prototype had were not really resolved or were simply just not fixable because of the T-17's fundamental conception of two engines. The exact fate of all of the T-17 Deerhounds is unknown. As far as we know, only four T-17s still exist in the world. These four vehicles are all in Brazil and located at the Armored Museum of the Armored Instruction Center, the Military Museum of the Southern Military Command, and at the Marechal Manuel Luis Osorio Historical Park. The most complete T-17 is located at the South Military Command Museum, although it was not in running condition. It is thought that the other 50 T-17s had either been scrapped or were used as range targets. According to Brazilian sources, some of the 37mm guns were used to arm the 37mm VBB-1 project, but this is not necessarily a fact. It would not be surprising if the Brazilian engineers used these guns, considering it would have been cheaper to repurpose the guns, and the T-17 was practically retired when these projects started in 1970. The Brazilians needed to modernize their army, and the US needed to be that supplier in order to strengthen their resolve to the Allied side. The T-17 Deerhound seems to have been more of an equipment dump by the US than military aid. It is possible that the Brazilian army may have ordered the T-17s themselves, but either way, it was not much of an improvement. The T-17 was not loved by its crews, and the mistake which had made the U.S. reject it were not fixable. This was Brazil's first 6x6, and it had made Brazil practically the only country in the world to have operated the T-17 in regular army units. Sadly, the T-17 ended up with an almost equally tragic story within the Brazilian army as it had with the U.S. army. A rejected vehicle, plagued with significant issues, and most of all, overshadowed by the successful M8 Greyhound. This concludes the T-17 Deerhound in Brazilian service. If you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to improve future tank encyclopedia content. Until then, keep us in your sights.